o tēnā koutou, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, ko Quentin Campbell, toka wengua, he honongo um, o te Raki Northern Regional Alliance, ASRMO, e mahi a hau. Um, welcome to today's uh, webinar event. Um, we have panellists from Hawke's Bay District Health Board representing Hastings Hospital today. Um, so my pleasure to hand over to Michelle and, um, and her team to introduce themselves. Uh, kia ora everybody, um, I'm Michelle Deacon, I'm the Recruitment Coordinator. Kia ora Kota. I'm Kay Robertshaw, sure. I'm the Director of Medical Training. Kia ora, I'm Laura Sandbrook, I'm a PGY2 here at Hastings Hospital. Kia ora, Jackie Mayburn, RMO Unit Manager. Um, today, uh, welcome to the Hawke's Bay Rag Show. Um, today, I want to talk about what it's um, like to work in Hawke's Bay, uh, what we're looking for, the application process, and a little bit of, about living in Hawke's Bay. Um, we're going to talk as we go through these um, slides. So why, why Hawke's Bay DHB? So as it says, our vision is simple. We want everyone in Hawke's Bay District to be healthy. So we're a 400 bedded um, Hospitals, so we're a medium size, similar to, to Dunedin. We have all specialties on site, apart from um, cardiothoracic, plastics, and neurosurgery. Um, these type of procedures go to um, Wellington. So we have a wide range of services, including subspecialties, as you can see, gen med. Um, most of our general medicine physicians are generalists, but they do have subspecialties. So you could be attached to a gen med run in cardiology for example. Um, we then have surgical and orthopaedics, paediatric, neonatal, ICU, HDU and coronary care, ED, radiology, operating theatre and anaesthetics, dental and public health and mental health and addiction services. So we serve a population of about 160,000, most um, will live in Hastings and Napier, um, but we do um, our total catchment area ranges from Wairau through to Central Hawke's Bay. And I've just popped a link there to our website if you want to go and have a look. Um, the Hawke's Bay District is um, a great place to live. We get lots of sun, obviously fabulous weather. Um, we are close to, or well, three hours drive to Wellington, no, four hours drive to Wellington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty central. So we are two hours to Topo and the ski fields. And then uh, we have lots of beaches around um, dotted around Hawke's Bay. And there's lots of see and do. Um, there's, the food's great, the wine's great, and we have lots to do outdoors, for example, lots of trekking. Um, we've got a cycle, cycle way that um, you, can, you can cycle hundreds of kilometres on. So the recruitment process here at Hawke's Bay is once you, um, once a sends through your applications, um, the, they are viewed by the pre educational supervisors who are your PESAs, and um, they are the people that look after you during your intern years, year one and two. Also the Director of Medical Training is involved in the selection and um, the recruitment consultant. So we will um, gather in a room, go through your um, CV, cover letter and references. Um, we, we like you to really um, come across a new cover letter that you want to work with us. Um, it's really important to show your keenness. If you have any family ties, if you've um, had a placement here, um, if you've come and met with the RMO unit or, or the recruitment consultant, pop that all in. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you think you'll be a good fit for us. Um, we don't interview candidates, but we um, do recommend a site visit, but it's not ma mandatory. You got any okay. Kate? We're just looking for well-rounded people who genuinely want to be in Hawke's Bay. It's a really beautiful place to live and work. And we want you to be happy here. So it's about matching the kind of things that you like to do with whether Hawke's Bay is the sort of place you want to do it. It's a really lovely hospital. I've worked here for oh, 15 odd years now. I'm very happy here. And I came here as a junior doctor too. So I think it's about thinking about where you want to be. And the covering letter is really key. We imagine we're looking at a lot of letters and we really want the honest truth about who you are and what your real, in your heart, reasons are for coming here, because that's what will strike me when I read your letters. So I guess we've gone over a bit, of, a bit about that. Um, 
We like to have a good mix of Otago and Auckland grads. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but um, certainly it's, al it's always good to have that mix. But also after good team fit and future leaders. So working as a PGY, PGY1 here in Hawke's Bay, I don't know Lord, but, or if you want to jump in at any stage, that's fine. So we have 19 PGY positions. So all of our RMO numbers sit around 160. So we have registrars in every specialty. So I'd say there would be about oh, 60 house officers and the rest would be registrars. So we have vocational training in most specialties. So you could start your basic medical training as a physician here at PGY3 level and work your way through. We have had got some registrars here that um, have stayed here through to the advanced um, training and then we'll move on. So we have regular house officer teaching, informal teaching on the job learning, and also formal teaching such as grand rounds, pathology um, meetings and weekly teaching sessions. Um, the PGY1s have a protected lunchtime meeting once a week. So roster information, house officers here in Hawke's Bay are paid at category C of the non-urban salary scale of the MECA. So, um, Roster frequency, three to four weekends per quarter, one to two rostered evenings per week, one set of night shifts per quarter, and you have to have done a medical run, and we don't tend to roster PGY runs until they've been here six months. So kia ora, I'm Laura, as I introduced myself earlier. Um, so that I would go over a couple of the pros of the Hawke's Bay region again, because I just love living here. In the summer, there's no other place to be. You're close to the beach. You can go to wineries and cideries. Um, there's live music at least once a week at the Sunday sessions, which might cost you $5 to get in and go sit on a lawn, sipping wine and eating cheese platters or pizza or whatever you feel like. And then in the winter, it's still a pretty cool place to be. Um, it's mild, it's close to the mountains, as said. So if you're getting into skiing or snowboarding, there is someone going to Ruapehu every weekend, at least. Um, you'll never be short of a ride. One of the things uh, I think I meant to talk about is orientation as well, the orientation process here. I had a bit of an advantage as I was a full year TI, um, but everyone in my cohort caught up really quickly. Uh, it's it's not so big that you can get lost. <laughs> um, you spend two days shadowing uh, your team uh, in the, at the end of your week of orientation. So you have a really good chance to get to know your team, uh, some of the ward staff, your patients, and some of your colleagues as well, You know, which is uh, always quite nice. There's also uh, guides for different runs um, written by RMOs for RMOs with helpful tips and tricks um, for the ward and the run. You know, just useful general things to know, little things that you might not have thought about so much as a TI that suddenly you have to do as a doctor and um, those are really, really useful and they're updated yearly. So it's not like you're getting a form from 2010. Um, overall, I think it's a, a pretty pretty solid orientation process um, here at Hawke's Bay. Uh, Michelle went over a bit about the teaching. Um, in my year, it got a little bit disrupted, what with the whole pandemic thing. Um, but we're getting PGY2 teaching as well, and I still get texts for the PGY1 teaching, so I'm assuming that program is going strong this year. <laughs> My favourite thing about working in Hawke's Bay is probably the size of the hospital. It's big enough that we don't immediately send everything interesting away, um, but it's also small enough that it's really easy to get to know everyone. And I think the collegial environment here is fantastic. It's much less scary to refer to someone when you know them and they know what they they know what you look like because it's it's easy to be mean if it's anonymous but um, but everyone knows everyone here and if someone is less than pleasant on the phone then that gets around quickly and that behaviour gets stomped on pretty quick so that's pretty great it's also a really interesting population that we serve here we've got a high percentage of Maori Pacifica and elderly um, for our population. Um, so serving this community, I find it to be really rewarding and um, we also get some quite interesting pathology as well. Overall, my experiences as PG1 were pretty positive, I would say. Um, I still remember my first ever long day, my first ever after hours experience as a doctor. And I had 
the most patient registrar. I text him about every single thing I did, stuff that I wouldn't even talk to my reg about now if I was on that long day again. Um, but he was super lovely about it. He was very patient. He answered all my questions. He settled my fears. And that's been the majority of my interactions with senior colleagues, uh, including SMOs here. So, um, you know, it's the, the greatest treasure in the world truly is the people, the people, the people. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, come to Hall today. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, the other thing that I would uh, mention to you is that um, in your second year, you'll be doing a community-based attachment. Mm -hmm. And we have got a fully funded community-based attachment program here, which is different to quite a lot of the other DHBs. They haven't got that off the ground. And so one of the quarters in your second year, if you stay on, and most of our first years do stay on to second year, we have opportunities to do primary care, palliative care, urgent care, rural hospital, uh, public health. We've got a whole range of different runs that we have set up to meet that need that are credited by the Medical Council. So that if you're thinking about the whole package of your first and second year training, then this is a great place to come. It's very true. I've just come off my community placement and um, as I've said, I really enjoy this hospital, but it was one of the highlights, so I think so far, yeah. Hmm. Um, for PGY2 year as well, the runs we offer are ED, ONG um, and paediatrics, along with the, the Gen Med, Gen Surge side of things too. I don't know if I mentioned what runs are available at PGY1. Yeah. I don't? Oh, no, no. No, it was on the slide. Oh, yeah. 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 So just PGY1 run, runs are, are in Gen Med, um, Gen Surge, which includes all the paedics. We do have an ENT dental ophthalmology run and a urology run that we will offer to a PGY1 if there's been, been no interest from our PGY2s. Um, you also can do a relief run in your, in your fourth quarter. So um, it covers the basics for your PGY1 year, which is great in terms of um, medical council requirements as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, the culture, um, as I've, I've mentioned, the collegial culture is something that I really enjoy about this hospital. Uh, it's something that I think we do really well. The meals, I haven't been to a lot of hospitals, but the, um, the cafe is not too bad. I, I think it's pretty all right. And then you get other people that come in from some other hospitals and they say it's really good. So, um, so I think that's a good sign. <laughs> um, I mean, my, like most places, I guess it's, it's uh, non-protective. That's just the facts of being an RMO, but um, I don't think I've ever showed up and then not been food. So I think that's kind of mm -hmm. the most important thing. Um, and not not just not being food, but, you know, there's always been decent food that I actually want to eat. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's a cafe. It's not a home-cooked meal, but they do a pretty good job. Um, and the portion size is very generous as well. So you will not go hungry. <laughs> I don't we, have problems. we also have um, a nice RMO Quarters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our, our mess is fantastic. Um, <laughs> it's just been recently renovated, actually. It has so indeed. And it's got uh, couches that I think were new last year or the year before, um, blankets. We've increased the amount of computers uh, up there as well, so there's now a little office space. Um, there's a huge TV. There's a really nice view because it's at the top of the hospital. It's um, the penthouse of the hospital. It really so is, you've yeah. got yeah. the yeah. just, just been painted, just had a fresh carpet put in. So, um, mm. so yeah, it's a great size as well. It's not cramped or, or it's stinky or anything like that. It's a really it's the nicest mess that I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the real joy of working in Hawke's Bay is um, you can't walk too far down the corridor without running into people and you spend your entire time saying hello, 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 because you know everybody and it's that, mm -hmm. that um, real spirit of coming together and working closely together, you know everybody from the orderly to the um, head of department, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's your friend here and everybody knows everybody because you will see one another at the farmer's market on Sunday, you'll see one another paddle boarding out at Tiawaga on a Sunday afternoon. We're all doing the same thing. We're all out um, enjoying the sunshine, mountain biking, walking, et cetera. So everybody is on the same level here and we really do all pull together uh, and work as one family. And I think that is one of Hawke's Bay's real strengths. 
there's a, there's a social group for RMOs and MDT. Um, so that's really great. We get together, uh, well, let's say at least once a month, and, you know, just drinks after work or out for dinner together. So that's really nice. And um, yeah. So you guys have sports groups yeah, as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, RMO ball. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's quite social. Discussion about wine and cheese yeah. as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Horses first. And the Wairapa <laughs> Food and Wine Festival is not too far away, so the bus not takes people away. down to there. No, so, yeah. Bridge Park Wine Festival. We will definitely see uh, a wide variety of people in the hospital there. Um, mm. Mission concert, Black Barn yeah, concerts, yeah. quite a few bands come and play here. So, the first question is um, can you come for a site visit? over during the weekend. So um, the answer to that is it's possible. I, I don't work on a weekend, but if it's the only time you can, can visit, I can maybe arrange for a house officer that's rostered on that weekend to um, meet with you. It would all depend on what their workload is like, though. So, so possible. Um, just feel free to email me. I can try and sort something out. Um, the next question is, what are the house prices like? Also, how easy is renting in Hawke's Bay? So prices are going up. House prices are going up at the moment. I think that's true for most of the country, um, unfortunately. Renting, it can be difficult, but we do um, have quite good um, uh, RMO Facebook page where people will talk amongst themselves and find rooms through there. So I think generally there's, you know, it's, it's not too bad to try and find a place through that. Thing. We also have an intranet um, on our notices where there's mm -hmm. always people looking for flatmates or offering houses or friends because um, people quite like to rent houses out to people, you know, um, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's always opportunity there. Uh, we've got another couple of questions. Uh, does Hawke's Bay tend to take people who choose it as a second preference? So we don't know where you have ranked us. So when we go through the applications, we are ranking you blindly. So we're basically just going on your cover letter. So I don't know the answer to that. Quentin may have some stats. It, it definitely varies from year to year. We're just talking to different RMOs. I know in my year, um, everyone who came to Hawke's Bay was their first choice because there were people that had put it as their first choice and miss out. Yeah. Uh, but in previous years, I think the year above me, there were people that had not ranked it as highly and so we all dropped. Yeah, so it, it changes every year. All right, the next question is, do we take peered applicants? Uh, yes, we do. You just need to note that in your cover letter. It's always a good way um, of, of us picking it up. Yeah, we're certainly accepting a paired applicants. We basically want you to be happy while mm. you're here and um, not being here with your partner isn't going to get you there. So we do actually care that you're comfortable and settled here. So we want people to want to be here and that this is the place that they actually want to live and spend some time. So um, that's why we would want you to be our first preference, just so that this is really where you want to be, because it is a lovely place if you want to be here. What's the, the salary band for our PGY ones? So it's category C, the non-urban. Yeah. Which I think, I can't remember off the top of my head. No, I haven't got it. No. We're too busy having a good time, yeah. enjoying the lifestyle. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Um, when, when would be the, 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 the first likely time that um, our PGY ones would be doing any late night shifts and, and weekend shifts? We can be started um, on long days and weekends straight away, but that's during a period of time when we've got extra support and mm. floats and things that people have think that this pretty Yeah, pretty that's, well that's something I forgot to mention actually about orientation. We have floats for a lot longer than other DHBs do. Um, so it's, well, I don't actually know how many weeks, but it's, it's about six several, weeks, several weeks of having floats. They're only there till 8 p.m., but um, they're so useful and they're just assigned to help PGY1s. So, um, very approachable, very lovely to have, very nice to have someone there to ask dumb questions or just help you out if you're stressed. Cool. So we've got another question. Are your mental health runs inclusive of inpatient care? 
So our mental health runs are based in the inpatient unit. They're not outpatient runs. They're not actually a CBA. They are purely inpatient. But you work with them. We have two house surgeons in the inpatient unit working alongside in a lovely team structure. And so we get um, positive feedback from the learning that happens in the mental health and patient unit. The other thing is that it, it, because Hawke's Bay is fairly small, it's really easy to get around. So when you're driving to work, it will always take you exactly the same amount of time to get here. We don't have traffic jams. And whilst parking can be busy around the hospital, you might have to walk 100 yards. You know, I trained in the UK. It's absolute heaven here. It's really easy to get in and out of work and be home on time. And in fact, Hawke's Bay is so flat, it's easy to bike in too. Yeah. So um, a lot of people bike in and out uh, from I the hospital. I bike to work every day because the sun's usually shining. It's usually lovely. Cycle away all the way. All right, so there's another question. Do you give extra marks for people who have done placement in Hawke's Bay or who have visited? Um, so with the ranking process, um, we give you a Hawke's Bay rank. So yes, you do get a mark for a placement and um, having visited. Um, so as we go through the applications, I will, I will note um, if you have done that, then you'll get a special rank, which goes towards the final mark when we're, when we're shortlisting. And I'd just like to, to thank our panellists from Hawke's Bay District Health Board, um, to Michelle, um, to Kate, to Laura, Jackie, um, Tenapai, to Mahi. Really appreciate you coming along this afternoon. Um, any questions from the TIs that haven't been answered in this session, um, send them either directly to Sally with her email address or send them through to me and then I, I can forward them through to, to her and her team. Um, but it's been lovely to see you again. Haven't seen you since uh, the lockdown last year, I think it was. Um, so it's, it's lovely to see you guys again um, and uh, wish you all the best. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Hi,